Welcome to our very first lesson in environmental chemistry. We have our text called Chemistry in Context. It is the project by the American Chemical Society. And we are beginning with the very first chapter, chapter one, the air we breathe. What is in the air we breathe? Can air be dangerous to our health? And how can chemistry help us decide? You know, your opening page of chapter one shows the California blue skies in the Lake Tahoe region. You see that beautiful picture there on our opening page of 16? It reads, Ancient Greeks saw air as one of the nature's basic elements along with earth, fire, and water. Californians see it. Ah, perhaps the words of offer clarification. Californians see too much of something that ought to be less visible. They also feel the effects of breathing that air, which too often brings the routine act of respiration to their attention. And that's a quote from David Carl, Introduction to Air in California. So people have always noticed and have been a little curious about the air we breathe. And together with earth, fire, and water in the ancients Greek named air, these were once considered the basic elements of nature. In our chapter, we will really just consider each one of those four basic elements and how it relates to the atmosphere we know as air. For hundreds of years, chemists experimented to learn more and more about the atmosphere and the composition of air. It is a thin veil between us and outer space. So this chapter describes the atmospheric gases that support the life on Earth. We'll also describe ozone in that stratosphere layer and its function to help protect us from harmful UV radiation from the sun. Ozone not only will come up in this current chapter, but it has a later chapter when we talk about greenhouse gases. And thirdly, we'll describe greenhouse gases in our atmosphere that protect us from the bitter cold of outer space. How have we altered the atmosphere? With over 7 billion people on our planet, it's not surprising that we have altered the atmosphere's composition. With predictions estimating over 10 billion people in the next few decades, it's no wonder that we've altered Earth's atmosphere. In its chemical composition, the percent ratios of each of the gases is indeed changing. With our responsibility to live responsibly in today's world, so we don't compromise our health and the health of our future generations, keeping the air clean is part of the responsibility. So in our first section together, what's in a breath? What total volume of air do you inhale and exhale in a typical day? Shall we figure this out? And this is just a little opening exercise to get us to consider the quantity of air at any one time we are inhaling and exhaling. If we inhale 0.5 liters of air with each breath, so 0.5 liters of air in every breath that we inhale and exhale, and that we're breathing 17 times per minute. How much do we breathe in a day? So 0.5 liters in every breath. We have 17 breaths per minute. And I'll go ahead and just finish that word so we can see what we're doing. And again, welcome to a, a science class where it's all about just considering dimensional analysis, isn't it? When I start, started with 0.5 liters in every breath, as the volume of air we inhale or exhale, we breathe in 17 times per minute. Notice what we've done with this first conversion factor. We've canceled the unit of breath and now have volume per minute. We want to breathe for an entire day, right? So in one day, we have to count the number of minutes. Now, I perhaps don't know that, but I do know there's 60 minutes in an hour. And I know that there's 24 hours in a day. And again, we're kind of bringing up a very important skill in any science class and typically in, in any chemistry class as well. It's called dimensional analysis, unit conversions. We'd like to know how many 
you know the volume of air how many liters of air do we consume in a typical day so starting with what was given in terms of volume in every breath I then canceled the breaths by using 17 breaths per minute and then we just considered that there's 60 minutes in an hour and that there's 24 hours in a day and do you see the units that we're left with we're left with liters of air in every day and now let's hit that do you have your calculator ready boy that's something to always have handy when we come together for our science class we're going to start with this unit conversion we're going to type in 0 0.5 times 17 times 60 times 24 and notice those are all uh, ratios sitting over the number 1 and so I don't bother going divided by 1 because that wouldn't change the overall answer what I found on my calculator and I hope you found the same with practice 12,240 liters of air in every day is the volume that we're inhaling and exhaling it's quite a bit isn't it it's more than perhaps you thought and so it is extremely important to us just as citizens to make sure that the quality of the air we're inhaling is of the utmost importance when we consider air and what its composition is made of we know that air is a mixture air is a mixture of many different gases and to understand what we mean by the classification of matter as a mixture we need to dive into a little chemistry and talk about the way we classify matter either based on its phase we can classify matter by knowing if it's a solid a liquid or a gas the phase of matter can be used to describe its classification but another way of classifying matter is based on its chemical composition the composition could be one of four categories matter can be a mixture or it can be pure if it's pure we recognize it to be an element or a compound and if it's a blend of many things we know it to be homogeneous or heterogeneous I need you to stop this lesson and go into the next folder and really dive into this chemistry lesson the next folder is called the classification of matter I need you to complete that lesson in its entirety to develop a very strong foundation of how we classify matter when you've completed that lesson I want you to come back here and we'll continue